guys, Katie. So I'm very, very excited for this video because I got a new pet. So this new pet is a pet that I've wanted for a very, very, very long time. Well, I, I've done like intense research and like really actually considered getting one for about two years and I have like wanted one but knew I wouldn't be able to have one for about probably like four years. <laughs> Before I start the video, I wanted to kind of tell you my little pre-story story of how my mom allowed me to get one. So she was always kind of like afraid of snakes. She wasn't really scared of them. She just wasn't really a huge fan of them. She didn't really want a snake in her house, which if you're afraid of snakes, can you blame her? So one time we went to Jay's Prehistoric Pets. We were visiting. It's pretty far from our house, so we didn't, you know, we just, it's not, we don't, blah, 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 blah. we don't go there all the time. We went there one time and it was really fun because we got to see tons of snakes and it was really awesome. After we go to prehistoric pets, we go to get a Starbucks. Not really important to the story, I'm just saying, we were in Starbucks. <laughs> I remember distinctly, I had gotten a cotton candy frappuccino, it was off their secret menu, and I was putting a straw in my frappuccino. I was like, hey, we should go back to prehistoric pets and pick up a snake and bring him home, jokingly, because obviously I knew my mom wouldn't let me get a snake. It was just a joke. She's like, I mean, okay. And then I was like, wait, really? Sophie and my dad and I were all there and um, we were just like in shock, which if you don't know, Sophie's my sister. And we were all there and we were just like in shock because of the words that just came out of my mom's mouth. My sister and I both kind of struggle with anxiety and depression. My sister more than I, but um, I still do have some anxiety. And something about holding snakes is very soothing to me. It just just having them run through your fingers is just so relaxing. So I waited and waited and waited until I found a snake that really suited me because I was like, if I'm gonna get a snake, it's probably going to be the only one I get for at least for a while. So I'm gonna wait until I find one that really speaks to me because we went to the reptile store basically every single weekend. So one day <laughs> we went to the reptile store and I found a Mexican black king snake. And I was like, wow. That is crazy there's a Mexican black king snake here. We've been here every weekend for a year. It's been crazy that we haven't seen a Mexican black king snake yet. So I asked if I could hold it, because if it was docile, I was like, okay, that's just, it's meant to be. Perfect world, it would have been a female. It wasn't, but I don't care. Um, just because females got a little bigger, that's the only reason I wanted a female, but I didn't really care. So I held it. He was the nice, one of the nicest snakes, definitely one of the nicest king snakes I've ever met. Um, probably the nicest king snake I've met and he was just so stunning he had just a couple of white spots on him at that moment I knew what I had to do so we went back home we talked to my mom and we were just like I found the snake that I want is it okay so in this video I'm going to unveil my new snake <laughs> are you ready to see my new snake dun, dun, dun. so here is my brand new male uh, juvenile Mexican black king snake. I was looking for the word. So he's a baby. He's very, very cute. He's very docile, as you can see. He's got a little white beard, which is absolutely adorable. So, you know, I keep the hamsters in a separate room from this guy. Obviously, they eat mice, so they are interested in rodents. This guy will get about three to four feet. It looks like I have a ring on. <laughs> this guy will get about three to four feet um, as an adult. Probably err on the side of three feet because he is a male. Females will get four, four and a half feet usually. He's so cute. <laughs> this guy here is about three months old. I'm, I don't have a name for him yet. I'm thinking, I'm leaning towards Sever Snake. That's the name I feel like fits him the most right now. So I love Harry Potter, so Severus Snake instead of Severus Snape. And Severus is like, he has like black hair, he wears a black cloak and all that stuff. So he's just overall kind of a bit of a gothic character. So I thought that was absolutely perfect for my new Mexican Black King Snake. Mexican Black King Snake. Mexican Black King Snake. As babies, they will have some white spots on them, but usually as they age, um, over time and over a lot of sheds, those white spots will start to go away and they will be a pure jet black color. He's upside down. Here's, here's his little white beard. My friend really wants me to name him Rumple Snake Skin. <laughs> which was a name I came up with and then I decided I didn't like. So that was really hard, I'm so sorry. I was like, ugh. <coughs> My mom is calling him Snakey. 
My dad calls Saffron Beardy, so now my mom's calling him Snakey. <sighs> Hello. I don't know how to pose when I'm holding a snake. It's like. And if you're wondering, yes, I did paint my nails for this occasion, this exact video, showing off my nails and the snake. I also, on a side note, I do my own nails. I don't get them done. I do fake nails. They last about three weeks. Just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> so in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys um, my setup for him. What you're about to see um, is just his quarantine and it's also just the bare minimum and later in his setup I'm going to be using aspen shavings not paper towels for his substrate. So it's that's not his permanent setup right now just while he's in quarantine um, just so I can monitor his droppings and all that stuff. Usually you only need to put them in quarantine when you have a lot of reptiles which is why I'm handling him and not just leaving him alone while he's still in quarantine because I don't have, there's not sickness that he can pass to any other snakes we own. So yeah, you're going to be seeing me um, set up his enclosure and, uh, or his quarantine enclosure per se. Yeah, just unboxing him and putting him in his little cage and I'm so excited. Um, the other name ideas I have are Raymond, which is, uh, I think that's his name, Raymond from uh, Princess and the Frog. I don't want to name him Ka because it's just way too <laughs> common. <laughs> I'm so funny. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I'm really not. Anyway, I wanted to, but the guy who does the voice of Ka also does the voice of Raymond, which is from Princess and the Frog. He's that little light bug guy. And also, a bonus to that name is that if I call him Ray, that means king in Spanish. So it's just a little, it's, it's a cool name. Look how you light up my life. I'm also thinking of possibly naming him Black Beauty, which is a book I really, really love about this black horse with this little white spot on his head. And I really, really love that book. Um, I've read it multiple times, so I thought that'd be a really cute name for him. I'm also thinking of naming him Moondrop, which is a kind of red grape. Lots of name ideas. Leave which one is your favorite in the comments. Please don't leave me any more suggestions unless you have like a really life-changing, amazing suggestion, which you probably will. But, but just because I, I just, I, I don't need any more suggestions. So here's the plan. This right here used to have this thing right there. Anyway, I've moved that thing so I can keep the bin right there. And right now what I need to do is sanitize this whole thing because obviously it's new, it's plastic. You want to make sure it's completely like stripped of any chemicals. I need to take off those two stickers um, just for you know, visual purposes. They're not really going to hurt the snake, obviously. And then, yeah, I need to set it up. There's still a couple of things I need to get. I need to get a hydrometer, which I will have by the time you see this video. I need to get a thermostat, which I already picked it out. I just need to buy it on Amazon. So, oh, I need a spray bottle and then a grapevine for him to, like, crawl onto. Um, because when snakes go into shed, they need something, like, rough to try and get some of their skin off. So, that is important. I'm using a Tupperware tub for now, um, for his water dish. And then I'll probably get him another one sometime pretty soon. But it's not in a hurry because I already have something that would work. And, yes, yeah, so I'm going to do that all off camera, but I'll show you what it looks like once I've got it set up. I forgot to tell you, the setup you're about to see is not... I repeat, not his permanent setup. Snakes have to go through quarantine the first couple of weeks of you having them. When they're in quarantine, basically what that means is that you will keep them on paper towels to check for things like mites, monitor their droppings, and just overall be able to visually see anything that's going on on the bedding, make sure there's no blood, anything like that, just to make sure everything's going okay. I really trust the store I got this from. It's from a local shop, which I'll probably go into later in the video. I really, really trust them, but just in case, no matter how much you trust someone, always, always put in quarantine for a couple of weeks. Thank you. I also forgot to mention, I need to drill holes in it so the snake can breathe. That's very important. All done. Now what I'm going to do, now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to drill some holes into this lid. So I have just finished drilling holes in this cage. Unlike hamsters, drilling holes is perfectly, like it has plenty of air for snakes. 
So for snakes, you need to make sure you don't have too much ventilation, otherwise it's gonna let too much heat out and it's also going to let too much humidity out. So that's why you need to drill holes, not add mesh. So basically, I'm gonna go ahead and set up this beast and we'll be set. I need to buy a couple things off Amazon and I am going to be using a hamster hattie. I put it in the dishwasher just so he doesn't smell the hamster at all. Otherwise, he's gonna probably start eating the tidy. I'm going to be getting him a little rock or something to help him get his shed off when he is in shed. So yeah, that's all there is for now though. And then I'll be working on some extra enrichment and all that stuff. Obviously, he's gonna have some um, aspen fibers as his bedding once he's out of quarantine. So yeah, that's basically all there is. So the guy at the store had said that if you attach the heat mat like to the bin, there's more of a chance that it will melt. So I'm not going to be adding, I'm not going to be sticking it to it. So just wanted to point that out there. This is the one I got. It's by Zoomed. I've heard great things about this. I'm going to be adding a little bit more enrichment here. I'm going to be getting a little bit of like a little rock so he can shed his skin off when it's done. You do need some more, like another um, hidey over here to thermoregulate. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please give this video a thumbs up and, or unless you're a snake, you don't have a thumb, but just fuck it with your tail. Just fuck it. All right, I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I just like this. <laughs>